Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. Today I wanna to talk to you about part two of my mini series, and that is how to buy your first house. In this part, we're gonna talk about getting pre-approved and everything you need to know when it comes to dealing with your lender. Let's get into it. So guys, once you've figured out if you're ready to buy a house, like my previous video mentioned, then you need to talk to a lender. It's imperative that you get pre-approved from a lender before you seek a real estate agent and actually make an offer. If you find a real estate agent, they show you houses and you fall in love with the house just to get it under a contract with an offer, only to find out that you don't qualify for that home, it's gonna break your heart. And it's gonna throw the whole deal out the window and there's not much you can really do about it. So the most important part when actually taking the steps forward to buying a house is to get pre-approved from your lender. Now, in order to get pre-approved, there's, there's some minimum qualifications that you have to meet. As an example, you need to at least, bare minimum, have a 620 credit score or better. Now, for the best rates out there, you're going to want a 740 or higher. But just to get you on the board, just to be able to play the game, you need at least a 620 credit score. So if you're not there yet, make sure you work on your credit while you're also saving money for a down payment. And speaking of a down payment, you're gonna need anywhere from 10 to 25% down if you want conventional financing. But because you're a first time home buyer, you may also qualify for various different first time home buyer programs. If you're military, you'll qualify for the VA loan. Depending on the area you wanna live in, you might qualify for the USDA loan. And any other area will qualify for the FHA loan, which is only three to 5% down. So I guess that would be step one in asking your lender. Figure out exactly what kind of area you want to live in and what kind of first time home buyers programs will qualify in that particular area. Now getting approved is all based on three things. It's based on your credit, your income, and your debt, specifically the debt to income ratio. A lender has to factor in all three of these things. If you have a great credit, but you're also completely maxed out with debts, you still won't qualify for the loan. Or vice versa, if you have absolutely no debts, but a terrible credit score, you still probably won't qualify for the loan. And if you do, it'll be at an extremely high interest rate compared to what you could get if you had a better credit score. Now, when it comes to your income, you're gonna to need to show proof of at least two years of consistent work history in the same field or sector. So if you can show two years of work history, but you're bouncing around left and right, the lender and the underwriters for the lender may see that as a red flag and not issue you the loan. But if you can show at least two years of consistent work history in the same sector, as an example, if you're a security guard and you bounce around from different agencies, you're still a security guard and you could still show a consistent track record of employment. But that's for the employed. What about the self-employed or the small business owners, the ones that don't have a W-2? Well, the rules are the same for the 1099 or small business owner employee. As long as you can show consistent income, whether it's W-2 income or 1099 income, as long as you could show consistent income over the past two years, then you'll qualify for the loan. But when it comes to the self-employed or small business owners and all your tax write-offs that you do to save some money, if you know you're gonna be house hunting and trying to qualify for a loan, then you have to limit the amount of deductions you take because the income is calculated based on your net profits. So if you made $100,000 each year for the past two years, but for the past two years you've been writing off $90,000 worth of expenses, then your income is only gonna show up to the lender as being $10,000 each year, which won't qualify for a loan. So if you're self-employed, a contract employee, or a small business owner of any kind, and you maximize the amount of deductions you, you take every year, just know you might have to bite the bullet on taxes to be able to qualify for a loan in the future. Now, when it comes to the third one, which is debts, this is pretty much self-explanatory. If you are completely over leveraged in debts and owe other financial institutions a lot of money, then the lender's not really gonna wanna risk giving you a loan because you're at a higher risk of defaulting. But one thing you can do if you do have a lot of debts or just need to find a way to lower the amount of debts you have to lower your debt to income ratio, one thing you're allowed to do is write off the debts that you may have if they're being paid by something else. So as an example, if you have a car that has a loan on it still, but you're leasing that car to a business, well, that business is paying for that car note. So on your debt to income ratio, it looks as if you don't have a car note in general. And that is one of the key things that a good lender is gonna be able to tell you is what to do to your debt to income ratio in order to qualify for certain loans. Now, when it comes to actually working with the lender themselves, you're gonna need to have money, money, and even more money. You're gonna have to have money for any good faith deposits. You're gonna have to have money for your down payments. You're gonna have to have the money to cover the closing costs that you have to pay for to get your loan. Now, as mentioned earlier, first time home buyers on average are anywhere from three to 5%, whereas conventional is anywhere from 10 to 25%. 
but there are some different first time home buyer programs out there that could qualify for zero dollars down. Now the three most common types of loans out there are conventional, FHA, and VA. Now of the three, the conventional loan has less rules, meaning you could finagle your way in and move things around in order to qualify for a loan. But it's at the cost of putting more money down or raising up your interest rate. Whereas first time home buyer programs like VA if you qualify or FHA have more rules and you have to have a better credit score and so on, but the upside is you can put less money down. Now when it comes to the individual loan categories, those are the most common three, but there's also other loans out there that you could use depending on your situation and what other strategies you're using when it comes to your personal finances. As an example, there's a USDA loan, which is if you decide to live in what's considered a rural area and meet the income and credit score limits, you could qualify to get a home with zero dollars down and no PMI. You might be asking yourself, well, Wes, what's PMI? PMI stands for private mortgage insurance, and it's a fee that you have to pay whenever you put less than 20% down. So whether you do conventional or FHA, if you're putting less than 20% down on any kind of loan, you're gonna have to pay PMI. The, the only two kinds of loan that are exempt from PMI is the USDA loan and the VA loan both of which have extremely strict rules that you have to qualify for. But don't worry, that fee is not forever. Once you develop at least 20% worth of equity in your home, you can refinance your loan to get rid of the PMI and save you that much more money each month. To continue on with the not so common loans out there, you also have adjustable rate mortgages or ARMs. You also have a split interest only loan, and this is typically done with a 10 year interest only period with a 20 year repayment term on the end that is fixed interest. So think of it like a 30 year fixed, but the first 10 years you're only paying interest. Similar to an ARM are things called HELOCs, which most people use a home equity line of credit to fund vacations or other big purchases. And not a lot of people know that you could actually have your mortgage be a home equity line of credit, have it be a first lien position. Now there's not many banks out there that do it because like I said, it's not really a common thing to do. But if you know you're gonna do something like velocity banking, which I talked about in a previous video, then a home equity line of credit for your house may be the right choice for you because with the proper planning, it allows you to pay for your mortgage in anywhere from five to 10 years, which is extremely quick than a 15 or 30 year fixed loan. But the scary thing about an ARM or a HELOC is that they're not fixed rate interest, meaning as interest rates go up or down, so can the interest rate that you owe in the bank. Regardless of what loan you're going after or what kind of first time home buyer program you're trying to qualify for, there's some forms and paperwork that you're gonna need to have in order to speed up the process. You'll need the last two years of W-2s or 1099s. You're going to need the most recent pay stub as well as your most recent two bank statements. And some lenders may even request your tax returns. So if your credit's in order and you have your down payments ready and you know what kind of loan you want to get and what area you want to shop for, then go to your lender with all these forms ready so that he or she can plug it all into the system and get you pre-approved for the most that you could possibly qualify for. Now, if you watch the first part of my series, then you'll know not to shop for the most you qualify for. Obviously a lender and a real estate agent want to sell you the most expensive home because on the lender half, they get paid based on the interest rate. And 3% of a million dollar home is a lot more money than 3% of a $200,000 home. As well as the real estate agent will want to sell you a more expensive home because that's what they make their commission off of. Only you know exactly what you can really qualify for and only you know what you can actually afford as your month to month payment. So the lender may tell you that you qualify for a $500,000 home with a monthly payment of $3,000. But if you know you can only afford a $2,000 payment, then ask the lender what that dollar amount would be when it comes to the price of the home. Maybe a $2,000 a month mortgage equates to a $350,000 home instead of the $500,000 home you qualify for. Now you know exactly what kind of price point you wanna to give to the realtor and what kind of homes you wanna shop around for. Now depending on what kind of loan program you go for will also depend on the amount of fees that you have to pay for things like loan processing. But all these fees when it comes to the lender side are negotiable. As an example, when I talked to the lender I used to buy my home, they were charging me $1,400 for a loan origination fee and a bunch of other little fees here and there. And I asked them what each individual fee was for and if any of these were actually necessary. There was even an overhead recouping fee, which translates to they wanted me to pay for the paper that they would use to print out my loan documents for me to sign. So. I asked them if there was any way we can negotiate to get rid of the majority of these fees. Now I still paid some of those fees, but it's safe to say that I knocked more than half away of what I would have paid. So 
Don't be afraid to find a lender and negotiate. And if the lender doesn't want to negotiate, then you could always go to a different lender. So don't be afraid when shopping around for a lender to find a lender that you like, that you trust. But also don't be afraid to negotiate the fees away. Because if you ask, chances are they'll say yes. And this is because they want to do business with you. And they don't want some minor fees that on average people don't pay attention to ruining their deal and causing you to go to a different lender. So just remember that you're the customer and you have all the power. If they tell you no, then show that you have no problem picking a different lender. But in the meantime, I wanna wish everybody good luck in their ventures of buying their first home and finding a proper real estate agent and proper lender that's gonna work for your best interest and that has the experience and knowledge necessary to offer you and get you the best possible deals. Until our next video, have a good one.